Assalamualaikum and good morning to our lecturer, Dr. Ziza. We are from Group 3 and we are going to present our case analysis for the company Dunkin Brands. I'm Nohayati. We'll present along with my group members, Muhammad Nabil Fikri, Rina, Nushahira, Nurul Hafiza, and Norwidia Wati. I will start with the introduction of the company. Dunkin Brands headquarter is located in Canton, Massachusetts in the United States. It is the parent company for Dunkin Donuts and Baskin Robbins. And in total, the company owns over 22,000 uh, restaurants in the US and other countries. In Dunkin Donuts, they sell uh, baked goods, beverages and packed coffee powders. And in the US, it has over 11,300 restaurants and 3,200 3, restaurants outside of US. For Baskin Robbins, the company sells hard serve ice creams, yogurts, cakes and drinks. The company has 2,500 restaurants in the US and 5,000 restaurants outside of US. Moving to the main issue. Firstly, uh, for strategy, Dunkin Brand's strategy is to open new stores located in Brazil. However, due to store cannibalization, it becomes a problem for the company. Store cannibalization occurs when a new store is opened close to the existing store and this may lead to decrease in sales and shutting down the existing store because the customer will choose to buy at the newer store. The second issue is regarding competitors. Dunkin' main competitors which are Starbucks, Krispy Kremes and Tim Hortons are aggressively growing in terms of products and services. And that being said, Dunkin' could be left behind by its competitors if the company does not appear unique and different to its customers and this may lead the customers to choose to buy at the three companies instead of Dunkin'. For segmentation, we have identified the segmentation for this case uh, which is geography, region and it is divided into four segments which is uh, Dunkin Donuts US, Dunkin Donuts International, Baskin Robin US and Baskin Robin International. The next part will be uh, presented by Rina. Okay, Assalamualaikum, good morning to Dr. Ziza. My name is Rina Binti Abdulmanan and I will explain uh, about the external analysis. So the first one is analysis of water five forces. Okay, uh, for rivalry among existing competitors, competition within coffee shop industry is strong because there is a high demand for premium coffee. So in this case, the company used different strategies such as providing exclusive offers and product or opening a new store in prestigious places. Anything that can keep their customer interested in their brand. The second one is barriers to entry. Barriers to entry are relatively low for small coffee shops. Small entrepreneurs, they can, they can open coffee shop without need of searching for franchise. However, even avoiding high fixed costs, variable costs are often high and small scale entrepreneurs are not able to compete with larger franchise store that can better negotiate pricing on food, packaging and other supplies. Next is bargaining power of suppliers. The power of suppliers is moderate because they depend on the volatile prices of raw materials. The price of coffee beans are basically high due to the presence of multiple actors. Suppliers that cannot sell coffee bean directly from its origin, generally the raw materials need to pass from different suppliers, so each one tries to make, add up the margin price. And also suppliers tend to have issue with a coffee shop because of the dear quality of product. Uh, and coffee shops, they are very selective to keep their offer at a high level of quality. Next is bargaining power of customer. Uh, the bargaining power of customer is high due to the availability of restaurant options in most places is abundant and consequently there is, in, there is intense price competitiveness among rival firms. The customer are interested in new offers and uh, such as loyalty and rewards program. They are also attracted by discount and offering of new products. So if Dunkin keeps coming up on new products, then it can limit uh, the bargaining power of customer. The last one is substitute product. Uh, 
The power of successful product is strong because customers tend to search for alternative. The threat of substitute product is high if it's offer a value proposition that is uniquely different from present offering of the industry. So in this case, uh, a customer tends to search for an alternative even if the coffee shop tries to offer new and special products because sometimes customers also drive to buy juice, soda and other fresh drink. Next. Uh, after our group discussion, we all agreed on the total weighted score for EFE matrix, which is 2.47. So from the results, uh, we can see that Duncan is slightly below the average, but we can say that they're still doing very well in addressing uh, these opportunities and threats that are available. However, there are some areas that Duncan needs to address, which is threats from Tim Hortons. Tim Horton is a company from Canada and they are moving uh, further into the US markets. Also, Tim Horton owns Cold Stone Creamery Ice Cream Shop chain, which is uh, can be a, a, a threat for Baskin Robin ice cream. Plus, the competitors also offering more lactose free options on their menu and there is a growing trend of healthier eating. Next. Uh, for competitive profile metrics, uh, we can see that uh, Dunkin with total uh, score at 2.55, which is the average standard, while Starbucks is doing very well with the total score with 3.57, while Krispy Kreme is under, uh, it's not very, uh, doing very well with total score 1.95. Okay, uh, from the table, of, uh, the, if it, if you can see price competitiveness factors for Dunkin' Brands is uh, three, it's rating three, while Starbucks is only one, and uh, which is mean that uh, Dunkin' is enjoy a distinct advantage over Starbucks on pricing. But for debt ratio factors, uh, Dunkin' is uh, struggling on its debt with low $1.8 billion in long-term debt as of fiscal year and on uh, and 2000, 2014. It's actually difficult to compare Dunkin with its rivals, Starbuck and Krispy Kreme because Starbuck, they don't offer donuts at all. And Krispy Kreme, they also don't offer ice cream, which is uh, quite complicated. That's all, thank you. Okay, hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nori Dawati Mikasandi and I will continue presenting for internal analysis. Okay, so for the mission statement, based on the Duncan mission statement, all the nine components have been mentioned and included in the mission statement and it reveals that Duncan have a good mission statement and no justification needed to improve in more details. Next slide. Okay, for financial analysis, for financial analysis, I have been divided into two, which is liquidity ratio and also profitability ratio. For the current ratio, it shows that the average in indicate a high risk of distress and default, and also the company may struggle to meet its short-term obligations because the current ratio is below the 1.50. Whereas for the quick ratio, the quick ratio is 1.24. So the result considered that banking can instantly get rid of its current liabilities where they have uh, have an enough asset. Next, for the profitability ratio, for the long term debt, after comparing both two years, which is the ratio, it, the ratio is getting higher. It indicates that Dunkin may have higher degree of risk, which is when they have higher degree in the ratio for debt, they also maybe have higher ratio in their risk. Okay, for the next profit margin, the profit margin ratio shows that Dunkis is increasing on their profit margin by 0.02%. So it means that the profit of the Dunkis still in good financial health. For the ROA, the ROA of the company is higher by 2014. So it also indicates Dunkin have more asset efficiency. But for the ROA also, the ratio for ROA are higher too, so it shows Dunkin are efficient at utilizing the company equity to generate profit. By overall, the Dunkin financial health still can be survived, but they need to take a good strategies to overcome their debt. Otherwise, they are in higher risk, so they need to use their asset and profit efficiently. 
Okay, so next slide. Okay, so for the total of IFE, which is uh, the total of strength plus weakness, we get 2.45. So it shows that Dunkin are weak in internal position because it's below than 2.50. The most important factor in the industry is weak 0 0.09, which is it, it refers to the franchiser and speed leader of QX, QSR. So I will pass the next presenter. Thank you. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Uh, I am Muhammad Nabi Fikri and I will present about swap matrix. For the first one, strength and opportunity strategy. Uh, develop a new pro new flavor for the coffee to keep up with the demand. So, uh, as we all know, Dunkin has been recognized as number one coffee in eight consecutive years by the brand's key customer loyalty index. And next, uh, create a gluten-free products to offer a healthier products in the market. So uh, nowadays, consumers are searching for a uh, healthier products. Uh, Gluten-free products are becoming more prominent in the US. Uh, 30 to 50 percent of the population have gluten sensitivity. And nowadays, uh, the customer are aware of uh, the benefits of tea and it is projected to, to rise up to 2.5 percent in the next five years. And the third point is uh, develop a lactose intolerant uh, product to capitalize in the segment. Uh, lactose intolerant products are a major worldwide needs, uh, which is two of third of the world adult population have trouble digesting milk. For the weakness and opportunity strategy, uh, invest more on advertising and promotion. Uh, the number of stores outside the US uh, has decreased. Uh, this is also due to the banking positioning and unit selling proposition is not clear. And the second one is use technological investment to develop uh, healthier products. Uh, Dunkin menu does not offer a healthy option for the health conscious. Uh, Dunkin also spend less in R&D compared to a competitors. And the third one, uh, hire more staff to reduce work overload and structure the organization. Workload in Dunkin is increasing compared to the number of employees, which resulting in less productivity and work stress. For the strength and threat strategy, uh, the first one is invest more on development of healthier products to be offered in the market. So customer nowadays believe that uh, caffeine uh, impact negatively on their health as series can raise blood pressure and cause indigestion. Uh, the second point, uh, invest more in coffee farm to ensure that the price offered are at a fair price. So cost of uh, logistic and prices of farm products are increasing due to the climate change and banking Dunkin also should negotiate better pricing on food packaging and other supplies and lastly weakness and threat strategy uh, the first point develop a gluten-free and bake good option for the customer that are conscious about their health uh, as I said earlier Dunkin does not offer a healthy option on the menu for the health conscious uh, beside that Tim Horton have a gluten-free coconut macaron in their menu and lastly, appoint a COO to oversee the whole operation. Uh, COO is quite important in an organization. Uh, their re responsible is to oversee the daily operation of a company, design and implement business strategy, plan, procedure, and set the goal for the form performance and growth of a company. With that, thank you. Okay, I will continue with the space matrix. These are the tables for each position after calculating and the average score for financial position is 2.6. Stability position is negative 3.6. Competitive position is negative 2.4 and industry position is 4.2. And these are the calculation that we have made. Okay, these are the graph after plotting. Uh, we can see that Dunkin Brands is positioned in the competitive quadrant, which indicates that Dunkin is competitive but is unstable. Therefore, it should focus on moving the firm to aggressive quadrant. Uh, we suggest Dunkin to take forward integration strategy, where Dunkin should take control of its business activities, such as uh, acquiring its distributors. Other than that, 
we also suggest Dunkin to take product development strategy such as uh, introduce, introduce, introducing products that are safe for, for customers with lactose intolerance and introduce more healthier options in the products. Assalamualaikum and good morning to Dr. Ziza. My name is Noor Shahira. I will present the Boston Consulting Group Matrix on BCG. We were going to be focusing on the right uh, product division. Uh, before that, Dunkin Leading Computer is Krispy Kreme. Uh, take notice number three and number four that represent Dunkin Donuts Inter International and Baskin Robin US being in quadrant four. Meanwhile, looking at quadrant two, um, Dunkin Donut US uh, I are I dominant here with Baskin Robin International. It is showing Dunkin's best long run opportunities for growth and profitability. Okay, next. This is a BCG matrix table. Okay. Uh, there are several recommendations, which is first. Dunkin Donut International, Baskin Robin US need invest more in advertising like promoting afternoon coffee and donut sales. Second, in product development, they need offering a healthy menu to their customers since customers really uh, wear about healthy meals. Uh, and then for uh, next is uh, Dunkin Donut International and Baskin Robin US needs to restructure their organization to achieve medium cap capital intensity, high inventory levels, and moderate marketing expense. So they need identify profitable niche markets uh, and focus on this. Okay. Next is uh, the internal external metrics. This is the table. Okay, we can see the Dunkin Donut US, the strongest region. Uh, the strategy for this is uh, harvest. Meanwhile, other segment also at the same quadrant. Dunkin need plan discontinuation of product at the end of its life cycle while extracting maximum profit from its sales. Then Dunkin must uh, limit further investment in the business and try to hold on to whatever market share there is for as long they can. Now looking at grand strategy metrics. As figure identify that Dunkin Donuts come in the first uh, quadrant, the company management must focus on the current market and achieve growth by adapting uh, the product development, market development, and market penetration strategies. And lastly, from me, Dunkin Donut can adopt the related diversification strategy to reduce its risk with broad portfolio or product line. Next, I pass to Nura Hafiza. Assalamualaikum and good morning to Dr. Ziza. Uh, I will explain about strategy implementation. Uh, QS, this is our QSP matrix. Uh, we choose two alternative strategy for Dunkin brands, which is product development and promotional event. According to the QSP matrix, we found that the product development is the best strategy to be implemented for Dunkin brands as the sum of total attractive core score is 5.78 this is because Dunkin brands products are mostly loved by the customer and they have won customers loyalty for eight consecutive years by brands brand keys customer loyalty index since they already have loyal customer they could make many improvements to their product according to the customer's needs for example, create menus for health conscious people, gluten allergy free products and add some, add some teas for the menus. For second alternative, the promotional event, sum of the total attractive score is 3.91, which is lower than the product development strategy. For recommendation, uh, for the internal issue, uh, strategy 
for strategy, they should maintain a number of stores in an area to avoid store cannibalization. It is better to open a certain number of stores in one region and sustain all instead of opening many stores and experiencing loss in some of them. For external issues, competitors, Dunkin Donuts have three main competitors which are Starbucks Krispy Kreme Donuts and Tim Hortons and their sales in coffee and donuts are increasing annually. These four firms have aggressive expansion and aggressively growing. Every firm has their own unique way to appeal to the customers. Dunkin has to appear different from their competitors by making more variety of products and increasing their customer satisfaction. They could make the product more appealing to gain more from customers competitive customer then attract non buyers in the market for action to be executed Dunkin brand should maintain current strategy and focus on product development and market penetration especially in creating healthy menus for health conscious people the new products will be advertised extensively using media buys and other online platforms for better market penetration to better the streamline operation, a COO should be installed to oversee the business and make sure all strategies are implemented. They could also make use of their well-established IT system and corporate website to gain more customers and promote their new product extensively. They should limit the amount of store in an area to avoid store cannibalization. They need to approve, improve relation franchise relations such as Dunkin need to adopt a more collaborative approach to handle disputes with franchises. Thank you.